One of the most fascinating things about where we are in Maine, on the shores of the Gulf of Maine, is our rocky intertidal area. When I say intertidal, I'm talking about the area on the coast between the high tide and the low tide. It's a massive area and there's a lot of living stuff in between. What I would like to do is go around and see what we can find as far as organisms and collect a few and create an intertidal tank or a saltwater tank back in our lab. So let's get collecting. All right, I've got my collection jug right here. I put some of uh, the seawater in here. In the Gulf of Maine, we're looking at about 60 degrees Fahrenheit on our, on our water. We will take a measurement of that uh, a little bit later, uh, but we want to keep whatever creatures we get, of course, underwater, because they're going to breathe underwater, and we want to keep them nice and cold. As soon as they start to heat up, they don't do so well. So we'll put our creatures in this bucket of water. Let's see what we can find. Okay, back at the lab, we have a 10 gallon tank and I wanna collect some salt water while we're here. It is possible to make the salt water in the lab, but since we're pretty close to the ocean and the ocean water is already very cold and already very salty, we won't have to go through all the trouble to make our own, although we will give you uh, an opportunity to see how we do make salt water in the lab. We've got two six gallon jugs, we'll fill them up, that way we have more than enough water for our 10 gallon tank. Nice, nice things about collecting the ocean water right here at the source is that we're getting all sorts of great phytoplankton and zooplankton in our water and we're building a nice base to our food chain so that when we put everything in the tank there's plenty of energy at the bottom level. So I was just looking along the pier, the underneath of the dock, and I found a little friend. This is a green sea urchin, pretty common around here, although we haven't found many of them on the dock, but this guy was hanging out just below the water surface, so we're going to get him in our tank. Okay, one of the first things that we want to do is make sure that our tank is filled with some sort of substrate. We've got some crushed up rock here and little bits of old creatures, shells and whatnot. And so we're going to make sure to uh, fill that. So we have maybe an inch or so of substrate at the bottom of our tank so the critters aren't slipping around on bare glass. Okay, so we're going to put some water in the tank, uh, but I don't want to splash all that gravel around. So. I'm gonna take my tray, put it in there, and dump the water onto the tray in the hope that the gravel doesn't explode out of the tank. <laughs> now I'm gonna put some of the rocks in to displace some of the water. Some barnacles course attached to the rocks. I also grabbed some green algae, also attached to rocks. Is that crab? Here are some of those mussels. Plunk with some big old barnacles on them. Shark in there. Little kind of guy. Woo! Okay, Bruce, I want to know why uh, in my um, future tank that I already collected for in the future, and now we're back here in real time, why I didn't probably find uh, very many sea stars, whereas years ago we used to find sea stars all the time and all the students would have sea stars in their tank, and that's why we see them in the time-lapse video. So where'd they go? Yeah, well, this is a, a dilemma that have been happening on both coasts in 2012 on the west coast sea stars started dying something they first labeled sea star wasting disease and in late 2013 and then 2014 people were starting to get that same kind of data on the east coast and so this is a disease that is running through the population of sea stars and killing a lot of them you can still find them they're just nowhere near as numerous as they used to be what is the uh, 
what is the disease? It just wastes them away. They can't take in food or what's the idea? Yeah, that's why they call it the wasting disease because they do actually kind of, they kind of start disintegrating. Yeah. And if you, I mean, that's because uh, they would like, uh, they would get white patches. That's I think usually the first step. And then the white patches would take over and then they'd just start to lose limbs. I, and I feel like I noticed that because um, the, uh, when I was taking them out of tanks a couple of years ago, I felt like it was a, a whole lot easier for their limbs to fall off. And I didn't yeah. feel like I was truly stressing them to the point where that would happen. And they were just very, uh, I don't know, brittle is probably the wrong word, but uh, they just kind of came apart. Yeah. So kind of a well-named disease, at least the first title they put on it was sea star wasting disease. All right, our tank is all set up. The creatures are settling in. Next time, we'll talk about how to keep track of some of the water chemistry that we need to keep track of. Specifically, we need to focus on temperature and the salt content of the water. And we'll use a tool called a hydrometer to do that. But I'll teach you about that next time.